Now, another method for mutant selection is um, penicillin enrichment. All right, it's called penicillin enrichment. Now, the term enrichment is used because uh, it increases the percentage or the probability of uh, the oxytrophs versus the prototrophs. All right, so increases your chances of picking up um, the mutant versus the wild type. That's why it's called an enrichment method. Uh, and why penicillin enrichment? Simply because this particular method uses uh, the antibiotic uh, penicillin. So what happens here is, um, <coughs> so in a tube of um, glucose salt broth, so we looked at glucose salt agar. This is glucose salt broth, which means the broth is made up purely of glucose and other dissolved mineral salts. Now, this combination is sufficient for prototrophs, but not for oxytrophs, right? The wild type, the non-mutants can grow on this. They can use the glucose to make whatever they need, but the oxytrophs, because they are mutants, um, this is insufficient. They need more uh, uh, additional growth factors to be included in the media. So the oxytrophs can't grow, but the prototrophs can grow. So what happens is, um, once you introduce the cells into the glucose uh, salt broth, you add the, an the antibiotic penicillin. Now penicillin is an, en is an antibiotic that targets only actively growing cells, or rather actively dividing cells. Now, if you remember the mechanism of action or the mode of action of penicillin, penicillin interferes with peptidoglycan synthesis, particularly at the point of the interbridge formation. Right, so penicillin uh, uh, interferes at that particular stage where the uh, interbridge forms. So, if the interbridge doesn't form, it uh, compromises the integrity of the peptidoglycan, and which weakens the bacteria cell wall, and the bacteria basically dies because uh, the cell wall is no longer uh, resilient enough uh, to give it its protection. <clears throat> so that's how penicillin works. It interferes with peptidoglycan synthesis. Now, when is peptidoglycan synthesized? Peptidoglycan is only synthesized when the cell is undergoing division, cell division. Because in a cell that doesn't divide, then there is no need to make new peptidoglycan or more peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is only made when the cell divides because it needs to make new components, which include the cell wall. So penicillin is an antibiotic that targets actively dividing cells because it targets peptidoglycan synthesis, which only happens in actively dividing cells. So the oxytrophs in this case will not be harmed by penicillin because the oxytrophs are not dividing in the glucose salt broth, right? Because the growth conditions are not suitable so the oxytrophs are not dividing in the glucose salt broth. Only the prototrophs are dividing in this case, right? Because the prototrophs, uh, they, they can make use of the glucose salt broth and make all their necessary uh, nutrients and uh, everything else that they need. And so the cells are happily dividing away. And therefore, Penicillin will have an effect on those cells, not on the oxytrophs. So once you add penicillin and incubate uh, the tubes, <clears throat> penicillin will start targeting the oxytrophs and it will start killing the, uh, sorry, penicillin will start targeting the prototrophs and it will start killing the prototrophs, right? Penicillin will not harm the oxytrophs. It only kills the uh, prototrophs. Now, after a while, you need to add an enzyme called penicillinase, right? So, penicillinase is an enzyme, right, 
that breaks down penicillin so you need to add these uh, you need to add this enzyme to basically stop the action of penicillin so once the antibiotic has been added and the cells have been incubated for a sufficient duration of time then the action of the antibiotic must be stopped right you can't let it go on and on and on forever the mode of action <coughs> of penicillin has to be stopped now this uh, this might be a puzzling to many people as to why do you need to stop the action of penicillin since penicillin is targeting the wild type prototrophs your oxytrophs are not harmed by the antibiotic then there is no need for you to stop the action of the antibiotic you can just let it go on and, and just let it kill the wild type prototrophs and just let the oxytrophs survive right that's what uh, one would tend to think however there is a trick here right there is a slight snitch here now what happens is when the antibiotic starts killing the prototrophs right what happened the prototrophs will burst open right because peptidoglycan synthesis is inhibited so the cells will lyse they would burst open and all the internal contents will spill out into this media right into this particular into this media <clears throat> and the internal contents would also include all the nutrients that the cell has synthesized for itself so the oxytrophs which lack one or two nutrient capabilities would start taking these nutrients that have been released by the dead cells and then they would start multiplying as well your oxytrophs will start multiplying uh, benefiting from the contents that came out from their dead uh, wild type friends right when the wild type cells died the cells burst open and uh, the internal contents will leak out and these contents can be taken in by the mutant cells and the mutant cells will start dividing and when these cells start dividing what's going to happen is penicillin will start killing the oxytrophs as well because penicillin targets actively dividing cells so if you let penicillin go on to do its function indefinitely then you would have no cells at all the end the antibiotic will kill the prototrophs and it will also end up killing the oxytrophs because the oxytrophs have started to divide as well so for that purpose the enzyme penicillinase has to be added to stop the function of penicillin after a sufficient amount of time so when you take samples from the tubes and if you were to plate them so if you take a sample from tube a before penicillin was added of course you would see lots of colonies all right uh, especially because this is nutrient agar so the prototrophs would grow the oxytrophs would grow but once you do your penicillin enrichment, so coming back to why this is called penicillin enrichment, so by adding penicillin, the antibiotic gets rid of the uh, prototrophs, gets rid of the wild type, and it increases the uh, the the uh, numbers of the oxytrophs, right? So now the ratio has shifted. <clears throat> you will have more oxytrophs than the prototrophs right initially you have more prototrophs here if you look at uh, this uh, if you look at this plate you have more prototrophs than oxytrophs right the prototrophs are the blue circles and the oxytrophs are the pink circles but after penicillin enrichment now you have more uh, oxytrophs than prototrophs right you have increased the the ratio <clears throat> The ratio has shifted so that's the reason why this is called penicillin enrichment so if you compare the colonies between both the plates then you would realize that you will have far fewer colonies on uh, on the plate uh, after penicillin enrichment and uh, majority of the colonies that you find here would be the mutants would be the oxytrops whereas here on this plate majority of the colonies would be the prototrops now this is uh, penicillin enrichment